Hey everyone, Seth Campbell here. Welcome back to Segway Plays Donkey Kong 64. In the last episode, we cleared out Chunky Kong's objectives in Angry Aztec. And as a result, we now have... If I can get to the collection screen... 15 banana medals. And you may remember a certain curmudgeonly old monkey telling us to come see him when we had... 15 banana medals and we can do this anywhere that Cranky's lab appears, but since we start off the game at back at DK Isles We can go back to where we started and meet Cranky Kong here in DK's treehouse area So let's see what this surprise of his is What's this? You've got 15 banana medals? I don't believe it. You must have made them yourself. <laughs> I suppose you want my surprise now. Well, I've got this little game for you to play on my computer. Score over 5,000 points for a chance to win the rareware coin. But. I know a score like that is way out of your league, Sonny. Why not give it a go anyway? Could do with a good laugh. Thanks, Dad. So yes, because the Donkey Kong Arcade was not enough torture, we now have to play Jetpack, which I believe was among the first Rareware games ever made. This is not a good start. It's pretty simple. You have to avoid the flying aliens, collect the ship parts, build the ship, and you'll fly off to the next level. The screen wraps around, so it's an infinite loop, and you just have to uh, fly above the ship, uh, game over already, to drop the parts. Pa! I knew you'd be hopeless at a real game. Try again, donkey. Yep. So as you might have guessed, based on the mention of a rareware coin, we have to do this too. This is required to beat the game. As you can see, the scores don't go that easy. You can get extra lives. Uh, I think you get an extra life at a thousand points. Um, you can collect some falling objects. They'll give you extra points. Those help. Uh, once you build the rocket, you have to fuel it all the way. So that's what these purple fuel boxes are for. Can't really use any of these other items for anything. I know. I, I guess you don't get a one up at one thousand. I don't know what the, uh, the deal is. I don't know if it's possible to get all five thousand points in one level. I know I certainly have never done it. Honestly, your best bet is almost just going in, well, not really circles, but... So yeah, once... Uh-oh. Once the ship is fueled, built and fueled, and is flashing, you get into it. And you land. Again. You don't have to build it again, but you have to fuel it again. And the, uh, the alien things, whatever they are, move more erratically, and it's... <laughs> it's difficult. I mean, on the one hand, I get what they were trying to do. You know, this is a big game for the N64, you know, it's a big step forward, so they kind of, they wanted to pay tribute to... Uh, games of the past and systems of the past and the origins of Nintendo and Rareware. I get that. You wanted to cameo that. But to put the Donkey Kong Arcade and this game in the game, like I could even get behind that and just having it for golden bananas. As you can see, I'm losing lives left and right here. But the fact that you have to beat these and not only beat them, but... But... 
complete a, a certain challenge in the sense of the arcade. You have to beat it twice, the Donkey Kong arcade, that is. And this, you have to get 5,000 points. It's, it's more frustrating than it needs to be. I'll just put it that way. I feel like this... Making this a requirement to beat the game was a mistake. Maybe that's just because I'm terrible at retro arcade games. Oh, I cut the fuel on the way down. That helps. Like I said, I, I like to kind of just cycle around like this. There there's nothing for sure that's totally safe, but... Um, this seems to work decently. See, at least in this first level, they're they're only they're moving more predictably. Oh, come on. I guarantee you that high score is Hazel's. There's no way I ever hit that. Okay, but I'm on to level two. I have over half of the points I need, and I still got two lives. I shouldn't say this out loud. No! It's like if you're carrying a part when you get hit, you will drop it where you are, and you'll have to go back and get it. You see, this is why I shouldn't say I'm doing all right out loud. Right. Well. I think I've said all there is to say, so. For the. Uh, for what I think is the first time in this Let's Play, I did this a lot in the Wind Waker Let's Play, let's uh, speed things up and I'll, I'll play you a little uh, old uh, cruddy MIDI music project. I shouldn't say cruddy. Um, but just like one of my old Berkeley instrumental demo projects uh, so you can hopefully enjoy the music while I fail. Oh, I should have mentioned, um, it's basically hold, hold A to fly upward and then you use the control stick. It's really, really simple.
several failed attempts later. What? You got my rareware coin. That's impossible. You must have cheated. Huh. All you can do now is play for fun, I suppose. Interested? No! I'm not letting you have another potion. Okay. Lot to, uh, to talk about what just happened there. Um. So, a few things. One. I'm an idiot. Not only is it possible to get 5,000 points in the first level alone, it's really preferable. You should do that. You should build the ship, but instead of getting in it to go to the second stage where the aliens are bouncing about and bouncing off of things and moving much more haphazardly, just keep going in the first stage where they're only moving in lines and keep collecting the falling space treasure until you get 5,000 points. Now, here's the thing that you probably didn't see, and um, I'll actually include a previous... Um, attempt where it uh, you could actually see it is once you get 5,000 points the next space treasure to drop will be the rareware coin so it's not just get 5,000 points you have to collect the coin in game and unfortunately because I was flying around like a maniac on the top of the screen the coin fell right into me and you couldn't actually see it on the time that I properly collected it so that yeah, that's not good, so like I said, I'll include, I'll actually show right now a previous failed attempt where the coin did appear and I failed to get it. Ladies and gentlemen, I, oh, I didn't even get it! I didn't even get it! Ah! So that's what it should have looked like. Anyway, if we go to our collection screen, we now not only have the Nintendo coin, we have the Rareware coin. So that is finally... We, 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 don't, we don't have to worry about that anymore. Let's keep it that way. So, with that done, finally... Again, I have been here for about 40 minutes on Jetpack alone. So, yeah, it's frustrating. It's, why was this, why, why did you have to do this, Nintendo? I, why did you have to make it necessary? So, before we go to the next world, though, I know I keep teasing it. There are just a couple little things around the DK Isles area that I would like to take care of. I believe one of them is around this way somewhere. There's a tiny Kong pad here on the ground, but we can't do anything with that yet. Okay, there's there's the banana over there with the grape switch, which we'll get in just a second. 
I'm trying to remember exactly where. There should be a gate with a coconut switch. I think I might... Am I remembering correctly? No. No, I'm not. Is it a past the factory, maybe? See, I just... I have written in my notes, Coconut Switch, Crocodile Isle. Means it ought to be around here somewhere. Maybe it was where I was originally thinking. Scintillating uh, gameplay here, I know. Oh, yep, there it is. Okay. So there is a platform down below these vines. If you jump down from above, you can reach it. And get a golden banana. Come to think of it, it would have been actually more efficient to do what I'm about to do next first before getting that because I want to go back up to that little corner where Snide's HQ is. Oh, come on. This is ridiculous. This should not be... <laughs> Can I... Nope. Okay, maybe jumping forward was the right answer there. <laughs> but yes, we want to go back to this little cave on the side of Crocodile Isle. Because in here, there is a ditty pad, which we saw before, which we can now use to jump into this bonus barrel. Welcome to bonus day. And it's another instance of Batty Barrel Bandit. And as I said, these get harder. So, once again, it's just line up for bananas. Ah! It's a little too slow. Okay. Pineapple and coconut on the fourth one. Like I said, each, you know, each one is different. Only have 40 seconds to get this three times. Uh, you know, I might have actually, if I had, 
waited just one more and gotten it. That might have counted as a win. I'm not actually sure. Okay, let's try this again. and banana. Oh! No, that's the same mistake I made last time. At least each time you try the game... Ugh. Nope, not gonna happen this time. At least each time you try the game, the order on the individual slots stays the same. Can't even get one. Ugh, why do I keep forgetting the pineapple? Not a word. Welcome to bonus stage. Coke, uh, pineapple, banana. Gotta remember that. One more. No! Ah. One mistake can sink you on this one. Like I said, these the difficulty on these escalates. Remember, there's two bananas on each one, and there's six total sides. Ah! Mixed up the last couple. No! Oh! Pineapple again! I might just have been able to pull that off. Welcome to bonus stage. As odd as this seems, I almost I would advise being patient. Wait until you're sure the banana is uh, going to appear. Because when you jump the gun and make a mistake, it's basically over. Okay, that one just skipped when I inputted it for input it for some reason. It waited till the next slide over. I should never go to Vegas. I've actually been to Vegas to once, uh, but only in the Las Vegas airport. Well, I guess technically twice. Uh, my family went to a family reunion out um, on Lake Tahoe in Squaw Valley in the summer of 2015. Uh, and we had a brief layover at the Las Vegas airport. 
and they really try to get you the instant you land there. Flashing lights, slot machines, all over the airport. It's, oh, it's crazy. No! You see, the, the, the problem is trying to keep four different patterns memorized at once. Okay. It's one more batty barrel bandit down. Now you may also notice in here there's a pad with a boulder on it, and we have Chunky Kong now to pick up this boulder and throw it. And there's a battle arena pad. Oh, Chunky does his disco pose on the. Uh, Battle Arena Warp. So this is Bish Bash Brawl. So this is a critter, and then this is something that we have not seen yet. Uh, it's basically a critter skeleton, and I can't remember if it has a proper name at the moment. I'm sure it does, and I'm sure I'm putting it on the screen right now. But they... Well, they're almost like dry bones from the Mario series. So critters, those things, and kasplats. So this this one's a bit tougher. These these guys take a few more hits to take them down, and I don't like how close to the edge I am. It may be tempting if I think you can take any Kong into this. I I just came with Chunky Kong because since he was needed for the boulder, it's maybe tempting to do primate punches. Personally, I don't because they're kind of slow, and if you don't get it off right, then one of the guys can hit you pretty easily. So now one last thing for this episode, and that of course is the grape switch on the back of Kalumzi's Island because we've just put it off for... Ow! Thought I could make it into the water there. For so darn long. And there is, of course, more to do on DK Isles. But... We will need some more abilities. And we'll come back and do a bunch more later. But now, it's finally time to explore the fourth world. You may remember the gate that opened is underwater. Sounded like a ship's bell. And here we are in a grotto of some sort. There's a chunky switch here, but the background is blue, which is curious because... Uh, I thought there was a tag barrel. Oh, there is, it's just over the water. Because all of the switches we've seen so far have had green backgrounds. Well, musically, it would suggest we're in for a nautical theme. 
But trying to ground pound this switch does not work. I thought I could duck underneath that, I guess not. But there is a green-haired Kasplat here. And we can take him out for Chunky's DK Isles blueprint. Now, before we enter this new world, let's just see uh, what advice Wrinkly Kong has for all of us. After releasing the seal, you'll find him waiting for DK over by Candy. Okay. Chunky doesn't need a key to open the chests below Cranky's lab. Okay. When the ship comes in, climb aboard with Diddy and fire the cannon. Say that when your ship comes in, the first man takes a sail. Couldn't resist. Jump through the star with Engard and the treasure trove opens. Wonder who Engard is? Well, veteran Donkey Kong Country players might know, but if you don't, we'll wait a little bit. Dive down to the submarine near Funky and see if Tiny can find a way inside. Well, forewarned is forearmed, as I believe I already used that cliché. Come on, I haven't got all day. Show me the bananas and I'm out of this dump. Yep, we only need 30, we have 86, so I think we're pretty good. I underestimated those Kongs. Their progress is unexpected. Chief Technician. I trust the Blastomatic will soon be ready to be activated. We, we've had a few technical problems, Your Majesty, and my men are all lazy. He's lying, sire. He's always asleep. But please forgive me, O oh Great One. We've worked really hard. Guards, make sure no one leaves until my machine is ready. You gotta make a run for it. Gloomy Galleon. Well, here we are. In some sort of dank cave. But we'll have to explore this new area in the next episode. See you then.